Hey everyone! Doing material science, especially when you work with nanomaterials, is quite different to the way one might go about doing engineering. As an engineer, you can take existing understanding and carefully design the structure that you want to build. And, barring any huge oversights, you can be pretty sure that what you end up with will be able to do what you needed it to. Nanoscience is a lot more iterative. We make a sample, or run a set of experiments, and then have to painstakingly characterise everything we've done. This helps us build a working hypothesis about how that material behaves, how it's structured, and what its useful properties may be. This feeds back into our next set of experiments. What do we change? What stays the same? And what applications can we envisage? In order to do all these detailed measurements on materials that are thousands of times smaller than you can see with a normal microscope, we need a totally different way of looking at things. Enter the Atomic Force Microscope. The AFM works in a different way to light or electron microscopes. Instead of focusing beams of light or electrons onto the sample, an AFM actually feels the molecular level roughness of the surface and produces a three-dimensional map. This works using exactly the same principle as a record player, where a pointed stylus runs through the grooves in a vinyl surface converting the changes in height into audible sound. The main difference is that the AFM stylus is many times smaller. The AFM tip is mounted on the end of a cantilever. As the tip scans over the sample surface, this cantilever bends slightly, and we can detect that using a laser. The magnitude of this deflection is directly related to the force on the tip at any instant in time, so by tracking this, we can measure the height of the sample. This technique lets us measure the height and other properties of some of the smallest materials in the world. The length of a silver nanowire? Easy. The structure of a synthetic opal? No problem even the thickness of a single strand of DNA. While AFM is actually capable of much more than this, I hope this quick rundown has at least given you a feel for the basics. See you next time! Thanks for watching everyone! If you like what I do, please consider supporting my work via my Patreon page, where you'll have access to a range of in-depth discussions on the physics, chemistry and engineering of nanomaterials. If you'd like regular updates, please subscribe and like the video. It helps so much, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.